acknowledge 25 years to Yitzhak Rabin's death. And to me, this day is a wake-up call. I look around. I see people with different ideas, different opinions. And I can't help but think about 25 years ago, which I saw only through videos. But I saw people similar to today, people with different ideas, all wanting to say what they have on their mind. And I can't help but think that different opinions have always and will always exist. And this is, this is great, but we need to learn how to handle them. On this day, it isn't about saying your opinion. It's about learning to listen to other people's opinions. Because of this divided society, we lost an honorable man 25 years ago, Yitzhak Rabin, who, whose whole life mission was to teach us to listen to each other. And I think on this day, it is our mission to make his ideal come alive, to make a better society that knows how to deal with those opinions, not erase them, but learn how to live with them and how to learn from them. For my parents' generation in Israel, Yitzhak Rabin isn't a story, he's a memory. Many of them, including my own father, were at the assembly in which Rabin was assassinated. So the subject of Yitzhak Rabin tends to pop into their head quite a lot. My generation, however, were not alive at the same time Rabin was, so we tend to think of him a lot less. This is why this day is so important to us. It's a day to take a step back and focus on our country's past. It's a day to reflect on everything that went wrong. It's a day to start a conversation about peace and violence and democracy. It's a day to mourn what could have been. And most importantly, it's a day to have hope. Hope that maybe someday someone will step up and finish what Rabin started. This week, we commemorate the 25th anniversary of the murder of Yitzhak Rabin. This day is very important to me because it is a reminder of a very important ideal, peace. Yitzhak Rabin lived and worked to make peace and in the end, he died for it. Uh, making peace is never easy. The reason why, in my opinion, is that in order to make peace, you need to sacrifice a piece of your own personal beliefs, your own personal truth. It's very easy to get caught up in your own truth, your own values and beliefs, and to dehumanize anyone who disagree disagrees with you. But it is much harder and much more important to compromise with your enemy and to make peace with someone you firmly disagree with. Igal Amir, Rabin's assassin, is someone who got consumed by his own truth, so obsessed with what he wanted and what he believed in that he failed to realize that the person in front of him was human too. So this day is crucial to me because it reminds me that making peace is more important than being right. And especially as today's world becomes more and more polarized with politics and rivalries, I think that's a lesson we should all keep in our hearts for the sake of peace and democracy. This day is a day of sadness and grief. This day should remind us the message of peace and actions against violence, verbal and physical. Every time Robin Memorial Day comes, I have a lot of memories. Although I did not get to live in the world you lived in, for my family, it is a real day of mourning. The day of the death of the democracy in Israel. That unforgettable day in the history of the state of Israel, which shows us how great the rift in Israeli society is and how far away we are from peace. It shows us that people are choosing to, to use violence over words. And we can also see it in our society today. It's not just this happened 25 years ago, it's also happening today. And I hope someday in the future there will be a leader for Israel that will inspire us all as Robin did and he will lead Israel to a better future. For me, Robin Memorial Day not only represents how much democracy is important, but also how important it is to keep its boundaries at the same time. No matter how badly we feel towards someone, we can never get to incitement and violence. We can protest as much as we want, say almost everything we want, and claim for change, but we can never, never hurt anyone. Robin was a peace symbol and will forever be. He's a huge loss for Israel and for the whole world, and this is a mourning day for all of us. This is a text written by the late Amos Oz, an Israeli writer, journalist, and advocate for peace. Yitzhak Rabin was murdered because he turned his back and our backs to the graves and chose life. 
Do not make him a mitre. Do not worship at his grave. Choose life and make sacred our living, our justice, our freedom, our wisdom, our truth. Because for these values, Yitzhak Rabin was murdered. This quote is from Yitzhak Rabin's speech at the opening of the 13th Knesset. Security is not only the tank, the plane, and the missile boat. Security is also, and perhaps above all, the person, the Israeli citizen. Security is your education. It's your home, school, street, and neighborhood, the society that has fostered you. Security is also the hope you have. It's a peace of mind and livelihood of the immigrant from Leningrad, the roof over the head of the immigrant from Gonda in Ethiopia, the factory that employs an injured soldier, a young native son. It means merging into a way of life and culture. That too is security. We shall remember Yitzhak Rabin, his image as a soldier, a warrior, a commander, and as commander of chief of the army of Israel. He served during the time of the Palmach, the IDF, and the Six-Day War. We shall remember the warrior that wished all his life for the day to turn his swords into pruning shears, to sit under his vine and fig tree without fear and to enjoy the fruits of peace. We shall remember the state man that predicted a different future for the nation of Israel, a new era full of peace. We shall remember Yitzhak Rabin, the son of Rosa and Nechamiah Rabin, a soldier, a commander, and a commander-in-chief. He was a statesman that dreamed and achieved but was taken down by the bullet of a murderer who was one of us. May his soul be bound up with the bond of life. Thank you. 